Okay, well, don't we'll worry about it. If I, if I can hear it. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you new mothers. Yeah, you know, we got a, We got two new, I mean, well, we got one new new mother, another new second mother, but happy Mother's Day for you all. Happy Mother's Day to all, I won't say you old mothers, but to... Uh, <laughs> to the mothers that have been mothers for a while. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. Now, if you knew the Flint, Flintstones uh, happy anniversary thing, do you, yeah, okay. uh, I would say that because uh, uh, Rich and Janice Mills are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary today. So let's give them a round of applause. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, so... Uh, I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. I think we're going to try that again. This is the day that the Lord has made. I still don't see Mike Galliano responding, so we're going to try it one more time. Okay. This is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, it is a wonderful and beautiful day to have on Sunday. It's a beautiful spring day, so I want to welcome each and every one of you, those on uh, Zoom and later on on YouTube. Uh, we are doing something a little different today. I'm going to make the first announcement. We are not going to have our, pa we're going to have a pastoral prayer, but we're not going to uh, talk about, uh, have people stand up and say prayers or ask for prayers because all those who have prayers, pull out your cell phone. I'm, doing, I'm telling you right now, pull out your cell phone, and if you have not already sent me a prayer request, send it to, and this is the number, 412-440-7729. And then if you text that prayer, then I will use that prayer, y'all use that prayer today, and if any time throughout the week, I will give that information to our prayer chain group uh, that we're establishing in the church so people can pray, continually pray, throughout the week. It's also in the bulletin. So, so if you have that prayer concern you would like me to share today, send that to me and it will come to my uh, tablet and we will be able to share that. Uh, I'll be able to share that in our pastoral prayer. Okay, again, 412-440-7729. Okay? Now, if you like this, let me know. If you don't like this, let me know. I would like to know about. I would like to know about that because this is we're trying to do something a little bit new. Uh, any other? We do have some announcements. I, I see someone wearing a hat, so we know we have, we have a hat. Uh, uh, Vacation Bible School. Let's go to our, our people in the back of the church first. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I am one to uh, give two announcements. The first one is from Missions, and we wanted to remind you that we are still collecting baby items for uh, the Human Coalition resource rooms. We uh, want to come alongside the um, new mothers or change of life mothers or mothers who just decided to choose life, and regardless of their um, circumstances, they chose life to give life. So we want to come alongside them and provide them with some of the basic resources that they need, like diapers and wipes and um, lotion and any all these cute little things. It's all listed in your bulletin. These are things that these new mothers that chose life need to help with their baby to give them a good start. So we ask that if you find it in your heart, if you could um, bring a donation in, you could do it during the week, drop it off with Margie. Or if you're coming in next week, we'd be happy. Uh, next week's our last week that we're uh, collecting because Fellowship is having a snack and chat in honor of celebration of life, on honor of all the donations and all the baby gifts that everyone has been so generous 
um, to give to help these new mothers. Uh, so please join us next week as we do uh, a prayer dedication to all the baby gifts and enjoy some good foods at the Snack and Chat. So we hope to see everyone next week. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, the deacons would just like to remind you that our shoe drive continues. Uh, you can drop off gently worn shoes on Sundays in the deacon's room or during the week in the church office. Also, please uh, remember to uh, save your boxes so we can pack and ship the shoes. Thanks. Thank you, Pearl. Any other announcements in the back? Not sitting, then uh, I know, uh, Mike, you have one, and then we'll have uh, the puppet. The puppet. I'm not the puppet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I attended the Presbyterian, the Alleghenies meeting yesterday, and it was very good. Part of what they talked about was um, the mission that the, the Presbyterian, that the, the, the uh, EPC has for the mission pro program they have through uh, Edge Nations in Sierra Leone. And they announced they're having their fourth annual golf outing on August 29th. So if anybody's interested, there's some pamphlets out on the back table if you're interested in going. Um, you don't have to be a golfer. They have a dinner, too. But uh, I, I just want to, it was really a good meeting. It, it was very, the worship was really powerful. Um, I, we should feel good about being part of the EPC. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. We also have a, Tom has an announcement. Buenos dias. I am here replacing my wife, Carrie, today, who's home with a stomach bug. And so I'm going to talk about the missions trip to Saint Louis, San Luis, Mexico uh, in the fall. On the next to the last page of your bulletin is the handout, and there's some nicer versions on the uh, piano out there. You can take them home and put them on your fridge to pray about this in the next couple weeks. The trip will be October 4 to 11 which includes Columbus Day holiday. Uh, $750 is what it will cost. And the first meeting is May 22nd after worship. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Discovery or an Adventure Island is coming soon. In fact, really soon, <laughs> sooner than time flies. But anyway, um, we are still looking for a games leader. We're still looking for people to help with registration. Um, let's see. Oh, and most of all, a puppeteer. If somebody would like to help with, um, you don't have to be seen. You just are hiding, I don't know, behind a tree or, or whatever Susie comes up with or somebody or decorating. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you would like to be a puppeteer or any of those, please let me know. Or if you want to help take the kids around to the different stations on the island. Um, so anyway, the dates again are June 20th to 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. in the evenings. So come and be a light for Jesus to the kids in, this, in the darkness of this world. Thank you, Sue. Any other announcements? Not seeing any, let us now, uh, let us worship God.
that's one we used to sing in my old church, and I love that one, so I'm going to bring it back. Let us join together in our responsive call to worship. I said, I will guard my ways, and I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle, so long as the wicked are in my presence. I will mute, I will mute and silent. I held my peace to no avail, and my distress grew worse. My heart became hot within me as I amused the burning earth. Then I spoke with my tongue, O Lord, make me know my end, what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made me my days a few handbreadths, and my lifetime is a nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as mere breath. Shalah, surely a man can Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does what no one will gather. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make the scorn of a, of a fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Remove your stroke from me. I, shall, I am spent by the hostility of your hand. When, when you, you decide, <clears throat> you consume like a moth what is dear to him. Surely all mankind is a mere breath. Shalom, so hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. Look away from me, that I may smile again, and before I depart. Let us worship God. So this morning, we are starting to introduce the VBS songs. So if you are a helper or a worker, raise your hand if you've already volunteered or are helping with VBS. Anybody in here? OK, so we have some people helping. We, like she said, we need more volunteers. So I need somebody to help me do skits. So anybody feel like they want to help me out? Um, so we're going to start learning the songs, and it's a really good way for, you know, us to get more kids in here to spread the word. Um, so we'll, we're going to be doing some VBS songs over the next few weeks, so help us out and learn the motions.
Let us go to God in unison and ask for his mercy and grace. Lord of forgiveness and mercy, rejoice that despite our sinfulness and wrongdoing, you'll hold us to yourself as beloved sons and daughters. Forgive us when we knowingly and deliberately do things counter to your perfect will, because we are seeking the thrill of excitement or even distorted happiness. Help, Help us with your Holy Spirit, Spirit to seek always seek the peace that surpasses, that surpasses all, all understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Christian friends, we can be overwhelmed with our sin, overwhelmed with the things that we know we aren't supposed to do, but we do anyway. But the good news is that despite what we do, God is always there embracing us and loving us and forgiving us. So hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let's remain standing and affirm what we believe by sharing together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray that God will open our hearts and minds. Almighty God and Father, we know that the wisdom of the world is foolishness to you and that the strength of the world is weakness. Yet we come to you humbly to seek understanding so that we can proclaim your wisdom and your strength to a world living in fear and ignorance. Give us your insight and perseverance to share with all those who enter our lives, the truth and good news of your Son. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our first reading comes from the Apostles Paul letter to the Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 to 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be confronted by this world be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For the, by the grace given to me, I say that everyone among you not think of himself more highly than ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, 
and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If, prophes if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if ser service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. May the Lord bless this reading and our understanding of his most holy word. So we're talking about the Lord's Prayer this morning. So I thought everybody knows how the Lord's Prayer goes. The song, probably when the pastor reads it, you'll all be able to sing it in your head, the Lord's Prayer. Um, so I found this version. It's by Citizens Way. Um, they're not somebody I was familiar with before. They were formerly known as the least of these, if that's familiar. But I thought this was a little bit more of a fun way to, to hear the Lord's Prayer. As I shared with you last week, as we ended our time of discussing the Nicene Creed, we're going to start this week on the Lord's Prayer. Now, this is going to be the first of three, a three-part sermon. So next week, we're going to use the same scripture, and then the week after that, we're going to use the same scripture, but it's going to uh, focus on different aspects of Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 14. So let's, let's go over what, uh, what the verses say, and then we'll talk about it. So Christ says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, just to make clear, even though I am from the South, ain't is not a word I use often. But also, I don't use as many ises as it seems to be in there. And who knows where this comes from? Well, I know the song, Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby. Right. The Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby is one of my favorite songs. It's a great song. If you haven't listened to it, look it up on YouTube. It also comes from one of my favorite scenes, and uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, where Homo, St uh, Hom Homer Stokes uh, is trying to get his constituency back on his side. And he says, is you is or is you ain't my constituency. But I didn't think that really fit my baby or my constituency for the sermon today. Because today is on prayer. So I said, is you is or is you ain't my God. Because so often when we think of God and think of prayer, we think it can be sometimes a magical or mystical incantation to get what we want. But instead, it should be a conversation with our God, seeking to lay our hopes, joys, trials, and tribulations on the one who is always with us. That should be our focus. So let's look at what that is. Now, one of the first things that comes to mind is, 
When we pray, what are our expectations? When we think of God, what are our expectations? Expectations are an important thing because sometimes we can build in our head what our expectations are, but the reality is when they are lived out, next slide, we find disappointment. Because our disappointment equals expectation over reality. We expect this, but this is what is real. And when they don't match, we're disappointed. Now, it's like going to Burger King or a McDonald's. Now, you know, when you look at the pictures, doesn't that just make your stomach growl? You go, oh my gosh, that, that Big Mac or that Whopper, and I didn't even bother putting a Wendy's Triple Deck Baconator on there. You know, they look so great. But when you get to the McDonald's and order one, your mouth might stop watering when you get that sad thing. Or I don't even know why people go to Burger King. I mean, I don't know what that's about. But expectation. You see this, they advertise it, but when you get there, it's something different. Now, one of the best things to do is to set expectations. If you have an expectation to make sure that the person that it's directed to understands clearly what your expectation is and to make sure they understand it and make sure then they agree to it. Because if you don't agree to expectations, you can't expect someone, I actually have an expectation, you can't have an expectation that they will then follow through unless they say, absolutely, I will not only seek to meet that expectation, I will seek to exceed that expectation. Now that's an important understanding, but we do know God will always exceed our expectations because our expectations are always limited. By our own understanding, by our own reality, by our own way of how we see things, we have an expectation of God that when we really look at what God does, how God proclaims himself, he always exceeds what we imagine him to be. Because he's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or even imagine. We might say, Lord, get me a, a job that pays more. Well, that might be on our expectation list, but that might not be God's reality. But God then gives us reality, not that we get paid more, but that we suddenly have a job that we really love. Or help me meet a person that I can be in a relationship with. We might have in our minds an expectation of someone a certain size, a certain dimensions, or whatever, but then God brings us a person that super exceeds our expectations because we realize it's not about size or measurements. It's about what's in the heart. Now, this is all about relationships. Relationship, because God has, an, in order to share expectations, in order to receive expectations, we have to have relationship. You can't have a relationship with someone without any connection or reality to a conversation. Now, that's where prayer comes in. Prayer doesn't help our relationship with God. Prayer is our relationship with God. When we pray, we are establishing relationship. Now, Janice and uh, Rich are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary today. Great. Super. Let's give them all a round of applause. That's super. I can imagine in the last 40 years, they have shared a couple of words with each other. Every now and then, they might have said something. Because if they hadn't over the last 40 years, if they've never talked, that really would not be a relationship. I don't know, it might be a marriage, but it wouldn't really be a relationship. But every day, rain or shine, good times, bad times, they talk, they converse, they relate. And that's established where they are today after 40 years of marriage. One of the sure signs of a relationship that's going in a bad direction is when people stop talking 
or they don't hear the other person. They just yell at the other person, or they decide just to sh uh, turn off. It's like uh, uh, airplane mode on your phone. You go, okay, I'm in airplane mode, boom. Nothing's coming in, nothing's going out, I'm done. But effective prayer is really the fruit of a relationship with God, not a technique for acquiring blessings. And that's an important point. Effective prayer has nothing to do with acquiring blessings. Effective prayer has to do with having been in that relationship and then realizing what that relationship really means to you and then taking that relationship and doing something with it, not getting something out of it especially material things. Sure, you can pray for anything. You can pray to win the lottery. You can do that. And I'm serious, you can pray every day to win the lottery. And if that's God's will, guess what? You'll win the lottery. If it's not God's will, you're not. So when Jesus gives us the, uh, tells us to pray in this way, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name, or be your name, he is now setting us an ability to establish an expectation, to establish relationship, to establish a conversation where we can talk to God and God can talk back to us. That is what prayer is about. But even as we look at the prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 14, we see some do's and don'ts. Jesus says, don't do this, and then he says, you do this. So he begins with, and when you pray, now we just set it up, at the very beginning of the chapter, he's talking about the needy. When you give, don't just say, hey, look at me, look at me. Because if you, have, if you do, you've received a reward. Now, he moves from that to say, let's talk about prayer. And he begins the same way. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. Now, back in the day, there were two types of church leaders. You had the Sadducees. Uh, they were the priests. They were the upper class. They were against anything to the Torah. Let's just look at scripture. But you know, that's a really nice guy. doesn't really mean a whole lot because the form of what we do, the sacrifices and the robes and all that, that's really the point. The Pharisees were lay people. And they were more of the middle class. What little middle class existed, they were more of that type. And they wanted to add laws to the Torah because they said, you know, we've got these good Ten Commandments, but people are basically schlubs, so we need to make more and more commandments so they don't even get close to violating these Ten. They would be conceived the ultra-conservatives versus the Sadducees would be the ultra-liberals in religious understanding. Jesus was neither. Jesus said, no, I'm not a Pharisee and I'm not a Sadducee. I'm trying to help you understand that they are hypocrites because they say one thing, they stand up in the, at the temple or they stand up in the synagogue and say, look at me, look at me, see how eloquently I pray, see how, uh, look at how, you know, wonderfully I, I stack words upon each other. It was all about me, 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 look at me. Well, if we read scripture, we know God is not a big fan of that mindset, of that me, me, me mindset. He favors the humble, not the prideful. And that was what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and other people were seeking to do, the ones who would give and say, look, look what I've given. They really need to take a course on how to deal with attention-seeking adults with their frequent dramatic displays, their exaggerated story, and their overtime looking at it, saying, let me spend hours praying because I want to make sure not only God gets it, but you all get it too to how good I am at what I do. And that was it, meaning, this, meaning that that's all they got. If people said, wow, look at that person pray. That's all they got. They better enjoy that because their prayers were empty words going to God. God wasn't looking at their prayers and saying, wow, I'm lucky to have someone like that on my side. I want to answer their prayers. 
Imagine, and I've said this in a couple of times over the last week, imagine if that's really what it took. That grandiosity, that look at me mindset is what it took to have prayers answered. Well, let's put a pen in that. We'll get back to that in a minute. Now, I, I, th I hear someone like Tom uh, Dungy, and believe it or not, even though I don't like sports, I know who he is. He was a football coach of some team, somewhere, at some time. Okay? And, uh, but people, but I remember, I know, doesn't he, did he have just a, he had a book, right? And he said, look at, people look at me and see this calm, fool guy on the sidelines, and I want them to know that my Christian faith, faith affects my coaching and everything I do. He wasn't wearing a sign, I'm a Christian, look at me, I'm special. He just did his thing, and then when asked, he attributed to God. In Christ. Wow, that's the way to do it. His faith informed his actions. And it was more like that guy that when Jesus says, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So don't look for public acclamation, but go by yourself and make room for God. Don't expect God to make room for you. God is not the inactive uh, partner in our lives. He is the active God in our lives. That we seek to make room for him so that we can have that relationship. And therefore we seek God not just in the privacy of the heart, but also in the activity of the, wor activity of the world. I love that, that passage from uh, Romans, Romans 12. It ends with, be constant in prayer. We should have that constant conversational prayer throughout the day. Some people want to say, well, I don't have time to pray. Well, you mean you don't have time to think? That's a little scary. You don't have time to say as you're driving, dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. That's prayer. As you're, as, as you're walking around, says, you know, I've got this uh, presentation or I've got this project or I have this relationship issue that I've got to face. Lord, give me strength. Prayer. That constant understanding, Lord, what should I do? What would you have me do? Just words, simple words, constant words that enable you to be in that conversation and then perhaps to open your ears to what God wants you to do day by day by day. It says in Romans 8, 26, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to, pray, uh, what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. If our mind turns to God, and we're so fearful of how to put words together, we don't need to worry about it, because the Spirit within us is giving us an ability to communicate to God what our inner thoughts that our inner heart really wants. Even when we say, I want to win the lottery, our heart might be telling, truly saying to God in a groaning, I want to feel secure for my family. And that constant prayer allows us this one-on-one -on -one time with God. That we're also always in that relationship. We're always in that conversation. We're not isolating ourselves and saying, I need a break. But in, time, we're, in reality, we're having real talk in real time. Because that's crucial to understanding a healthy relationship. And so, do you have someone to talk to with real talk? If you don't, you got God. If there's no one else in your existence that you can talk to, you can talk to God. And more than anyone else in your existence, in prayer, in that conversation, God will respond. And God might not, you might not want the answer God gives you, but the answer God gives you will be the perfect answer. Because God's way is perfect, and his word is flawless, and he shields all who take refuge in him. So if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling uh, afraid, if you're feeling insecure, take your refuge in God, in his word, in his will, in prayer, and he will give you refuge. Because God answers prayer in five ways. So there's, there's things out there that God answers prayer in three ways. Yes, no, maybe, or wait. 
But I think there's a little more nuance. First, I, no, I'm not going to do that. I love you too much. You want to win the lottery? No, I'm not going to do that. Because, you know, let's look at everyone who wins the lottery. Their lives go bad real quick. So, no, I love you too much to allow that to happen. Might be yes, but you're going to have to wait. Because now it's not the right time. You're not ready for what you say you want. Might be yes, but it won't be what you expected. It's yes, but yeah, you're going to have to, you know, I want, a new, I, I want a job with pays a lot of money. Yes, but that job might not be at all what you think it is. Sometimes it will bring you towards a point where you're going to be doing ministry. Sometimes there might be a point where you're not going to do ministry. Sometimes, it, but it, what it will always do, it will always lead you to the vocation that God has set for you. And that's a question that, you know, when we ask ourselves, how often have we ever explored, sat down and said, Lord, what do you want me to do in life? Just ask that question. What is my vocation? Not what is my job, but what, is, what are you calling for me to do? Sometimes it might not be what you expect. Sometimes, yes, and here's more. You wanted this, I gave you that. I gave you much more than you ever wanted. Oftentimes when that happens, we don't often appreciate it. Sometimes we actually think we deserve it. Wow, I asked for a better job, and I got whoop, a really better job. I must be special. No, that's God's answering your prayer. And finally, yes, I thought you'd never ask. I've been waiting, and here it is. Now, you could nuance this into 15 different ways. But I think this gives us a, lo a little better understanding than just yes, no, wait. Or even maybe. God will answer our prayers. We have to have ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart open to understanding what that answer is. Well, Jesus goes on in Matthew 6, 7, and 8. He says that when you pray, second, do not, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Now, what does that mean, empty words and phrases, like the Gentiles do, like the pagans do? Have you ever heard the word incantation? Incantation is a word or a phrase that's magical and mystical that's supposed to do something, get us what we want. These magic words. Now, does anyone know any magic words? Abracadabra. Presto, changeo, shazam. Those are all good magic words. Has anyone ever heard of Hocus Pocus? You know, besides the movie. Do you know where it comes from? Now, some of you have heard this before. Some of you might not have. And please forgive me, my, brother, my brothers and sisters who may or have been Catholic. This is not directed, but it's reality. Back in the day, when Catholic priests would stand before the altar, and they would, they would stand and they would have the bread, you know, the wafer. When they, got, when they picked up the wafer, they would turn their backs to the congregation, and they would lift it up, and they would use the words, hoc est corpus. This is my body. In the words of the institution. And Jesus said, this is my body. In Latin, it's hoc est corpus. Now, the Catholic priests often were not very smart. Again, they were not very literate. They were memorizing words and not knowing Latin. So they could not maybe pronounce it correctly. They also couldn't eat anything until they gave their last mass. And they might have five or six masses before the day was done, so they couldn't eat anything until that last mass. So you can imagine, they were rushing through them. You know? And lastly, after you've already had four masses, and you're drinking the wine, by the fifth mass, you might be a little tipsy. So what they heard was, when they turned around, the peasants... The, you know, the peasants were going, what, what is he saying? Hocus pocus? 
And they realize, oh, to turn something from one thing into another, turn, turn it from bread into the body, the flesh of Christ, hocus pocus. So those were words that were established that created this mindset that this was all magical and mystical. But it's not. And if you really want magic and mysticism, all you got to do is go to the pantheon of gods. You can see each little blot is a different pantheon of gods. It's Roman, Greek, Egyptian, uh, uh, Norse, Finnish. There's mythologies and pantheons of different gods all around the world. Even among the saints, Christian saints, that mysticism around them. But there's also one of our most modern pantheons is celebrities, sports figures, movie stars, like one of our best, Will Smith, saying, don't chase people. Be yourself. Do your own thing and work hard. Really, Will? Really? You might have wanted to think about what you said prior to what happened at the Academy Awards. But that's not about this, is it about that? But the point is, we've created a whole mythology and pantheon of gods and our celebrities and our sports figures and other people that gain a spotlight. They are our gods. So what they say is stuff we want to emulate. And the words they use, we want to copy and quote and establish the, that is our priority of life. But as we can see, all of us can fail and fall, and all God said, because they were all about doing their own thing when they wanted to do their own thing. That was the whole point of being a God. If you're a God, you can do whatever you want. And the gods weren't very nice people. They did a lot of bad things. But God, our God, says in uh, Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord. I do not change. From the foundation of the earth, before the foundation of the earth, God established his plan, his will, his purpose. It does not change. And that's what I was saying before. Imagine if it did. Imagine if a certain group of words, a certain, a certain length of words, a certain number of people would all gather to pray together and that would change God's mind. How sad and terrifying that would be. You pray for something and it doesn't get you what you want, then you say, was I one short? One person short praying with me? Was I one word? Did I get the phrasing out of turn? Was my incantation wrong? What sort of God would that be? To me, that would be terrifying. But instead, we have a God who is with us. It says in Psalm 100, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. That's who our God is. Because he's an awesome God. I love the song. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. We don't have to worry about God being, you know, in a bad mood. We don't have to God wanting something God wants that really shouldn't want. We don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So what do we know about God? God is good. And so Jesus says, this is the do. Pray then like this, our Father. God is our beloved Father. And everything God does is for our good and his glory. Now, today is not Father's Day. Today is Mother's Day. And I know every single solitary mother here has been a fantastic, super-duper mother. Never done a single wrong thing in raising their kids at all. I'm not going to say right, because I don't want to see the, I don't want to see anyone grimace. But I will say, fathers are in the same way. We all sin and fall short of God's glory. Yet, God doesn't. Now, I bring that mother-father thing up because today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we also celebrate the reality that our children model themselves after us. Whether it's brushing our teeth, shaving, ironing. Uh, and I got to tell you, I spent a lot of time trying to find mothers that were doing man things in front of their boys or in front of their sons or, uh, or in front of their daughters, but there are literally no pictures out there. There's always the guy. So sorry, it wasn't my, not my fault. But the reality is we model ourselves after our parents for good or bad. Now, it says imitation is the sincerest 
form of flattery, unless that invitation has taken us in a negative way. And sometimes our kids, I, I saw this, I know, TikTok. I do watch TikTok. Okay, I saw this TikTok, and this little girl, two years old, can't be more two years old, is picking up laundry from a basket and put it in the washer. Or the, the, yeah, the washing machine. And as she's picking up, she says, this is BS. And she just keeps up, this is BS. And pregnant says, I wonder where she got that from. I don't know. I can't speak to it. But, hmm. Now, we're called to have a transformed mind. Because the modeling of, of ourselves after God is supposed to transform us. To make us into someone different. I love this uh, quote, thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become habits, and habits become your character. So if our thoughts are about love and we speak those words and then we act on those words and that becomes our habit, that's who we become. We become loving people. For Paul tells us to do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I love that verse because it tells us that God's perfect, pleasing, and wonderful will is for us. For he has his plans, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord's, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is God's plan for us. And when we pray, we are seeking to understand that plan because we are building, going back to relationship, of trust. I love this acronym of trusting. Truth, respect, understanding, safety, transparency, invest time and emotions, niceness, genuineness. That is God to us. Are we that in return to God? And even more so, are we that to other people that we are seeking to establish a trusting relationship with. Our national motto, surprisingly enough, is in God I trust, or in God we trust. But that comes from Proverbs uh, 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Are we going to God in prayer seeking the path he has set out before us? Are we going to God in prayer, seeking the plan he has established before the beginning of time for us? Because God's timing is not our timing. God's will is not our will. God's plan is not our plan. God's glory is not our glory. It all belongs to God. So when we pray, when we seek that relationship, when we use words that are sincere from the heart, when we allow the spirit within us with groanings too deep to words to communicate to God what our heart is calling for, we always end with the word, your will be done, not mine. Your will, not mine, for you are our God, and we are your beloved people. In his holy name. Still not too late to send a prayer request, 412-440-7729. Uh, if it comes in before I finish, I will definitely share it with you. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with us today. We celebrate Janice and Rich Mill's 40th anniversary. We thank you so much for that, and we ask your blessings upon them as they enjoy both Mother's Day and their anniversary together. Lord, we also thank you that Donna Carney had a good scan and a good report. Continue to bless her and give her your strength and presence and let her get through this difficult time. We thank you for Mike's love for her and his support and for everyone else in our congregation, but even more, that you are the great, great father that are holding her in the palm of your hand. Lord, that we have some graduates uh, coming up. We have Raymond Harris, he's graduated from high school. Uh, uh, going into carpentry. Uh, May Lynn is graduating from uh, college, going into accounting. We ask you to be with Dan, Bob Hawk's friend, who has uh, pancreatic cancer. 
uh, and not doing too well. And Lord, be with John Weber, who has a number of medical issues and some pain issues. We thank you for Joyce's love and support for her and give, her, give him your continued presence. We ask you to be with Carrie uh, Richards Lord, who has a stomach bug today. Just be with her and, and, and be present in her uh, recovery. Lord, be with the Johns family, uh, because Ron, uh, the father, Ron, passed away, been neighbors to Janice and um, Janet and John Federcal for many, many years. Be with that family. Lord, we ask you to be with uh, Leslie Hallman's sister, Lisa, and her dad as well. Uh, Lisa needs strength to help deal with the ongoing problems her cancer is doing to her body and her dad just for loneliness after the loss of, her, of his wife, Marilyn. Lord, be with uh, Katie Banizak as she's having surgery on June, 19th, uh, June 13th on her neck. Continue to lay your hand of blessing upon her. And Lord, continue to be with Janet Federkow, that she gets stronger each and every day. Lord, we know that you are with us in a powerful way, that in prayer you open our hearts to your will and your purpose. In all things, Lord, help us to understand that. Let's not look for the magic or the uh, mystical, but let's look for the simple. Let's be constantly in prayer with you, speaking our daily needs, our wants, our conversation, things that we find beautiful, things that we find interesting. And Lord, for you know this all, but the same way, you love to hear your children speak to you because you are our Father. We thank you. And ask your blessings as, on all of us as we pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christian friends, it's a wonderful thing that as we gather together that we can, that we can uh, serve, serve each other by serving the Lord, by returning the gifts or giving a portion of what God has given to us to his ministry and his truth. There are offering baskets in the back. For those who have already laid your offerings down, we thank you. For those who are still to do so, we thank you. For those on YouTube and uh, Zoom, if you would like to send your offerings in, again, we thank you. For we use these offerings to share the good news of Jesus Christ in West Mifflin and throughout the world. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for what you've given us. We thank you so much for your love and your presence in our lives. We thank you so much that you are our Lord, that you are our Father, that you are our God, and that we are the sheep of your pasture. Bless us in all things, Lord. We ask you in your son's holy name. Amen.
Happy Mother's Day to everyone. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed Mother's Day. You all deserve it. And as we leave this place, let us leave knowing that as we give honor to our mothers, let us more than anything give honor to what God has given us through our mothers. Because anything good from them has come from God. <coughs> so let us recognize that. Let us proclaim the joy we have for our mothers and give glory to God and be in constant prayer for what he's done for us and what he does for us. And by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the companionship of God, uh, God's Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>